with it being a new year, I've set out in 2016 to do some new things with this OTRS Central channel, and at the same time, do some of the things from the past that I enjoyed that worked. So, trying to start off with a bit of a clean slate and try to reshuffle some things up, if you will. So, I was sitting there, I was off work Tuesday night. I'm like, I wonder what I'm going to do. And a crazy idea struck me. I said, you know what? I'm off work. Um, I get Pop TV. Um, Impact is going to air on said Pop TV. It's their debut episode. What the hell? Why not? I'll take two hours, set it aside from 9 to 11 Eastern. I'm going to watch Impact Wrestling on their new home of Pop TV. Oh, boy. My thought process being is that maybe with having taken a break for them for a while, that even if things weren't great, it wouldn't feel as bad. There was a part of me that was at least a little excited that they weren't on that crappy Destination America anymore, that I actually have Pop TV included in my cable package so I could actually watch them on the big screen. I mean, I didn't have to put forth a bunch of effort or work or money in order to get it. So that was a cool thing. I'm like, shit, you know what? They're starting off anew on a new network. I'm starting off the year anew, so why not give them another chance and let's see what happens. Let's get nuts, people. Yeah. Let's talk about some Impact Wrestling. There are a few things I want to talk about with this show. First is the presentation of it. I'm not going to lie. You know, I wasn't going into this show with big expectations anyways. But on the very beginning of the show, when they showed the graphic of where they were, and they misspelled Bethlehem by saying Bethlehem, you know, I'm like, oh, Christ. How does that happen? Ah, oh, Christ. Is that what this company is still about? It is the basic fundamental things, how could you screw them up? And that's a sloppy mistake, and that is unacceptable. And I don't care if you think it doesn't matter. It does matter, because it speaks to the attention to detail. I mean, a basic fucking spell check. You could Google biggest cities in Pennsylvania, and Bethlehem is... In the top five or six, it's right there where the spelling is clear as day. How the hell do you spell the city's name wrong? Once you get past that ridiculousness and that stupidity, looking at the overall presentation of the show, you know, you've got the six-sided ring there. So at least, if nothing else, it feels different in that sense because the ring is different. That's one thing. Another thing that TNA has done well over recent years is doing a little bit more in terms of making some of their promos backstage and some of the things they do backstage feel more gorilla. They feel realer. They have a little bit more grit to them, a little more realness to them. And the way that they approach the performers and the performers speak and approach the segments has a nice feel to it. And I thought they incorporated that well in this show with Kurt Angle's backstage walk, Bobby Roode coming to the uh, venue. You know, I like some of the things that they did. I like the fact that even though they didn't give the knockouts a ton of time, that before the match they actually tried to set the table by having the beautiful people actually cut a promo. You're actually trying to introduce these characters again to the audience. And, you know, from a presentation standpoint, yes, there were things that are lacking. There are always going to be things that are lacking because it's not like they have a great pr production budget to work with to begin with. But you know, there are elements there that I like about what Impact Wrestling does. And there are things within that show that I like that TNA has done actually for some years now. And it was good to see that again. In terms of the in-ring action, um, you know, it was okay. It was just okay. I mean, you've got Ethan Carter III versus Lashley. You've got Eric Young versus Matt Hardy. You know, and then you've got the uh, couple other matches. You've got that knockouts match. That is what it is. I mean, there was wrestling on the show. There wasn't great wrestling on the show. I don't know that it needed to have great wrestling on the show. It would have been nice if there was one really, really good or great match on the show. I will say that. Um, but you had enough in-ring action. 
but I don't know if it was great. But the good thing was I don't know that a lot of it was terrible. But in terms of segments and memorable moments, I think this was a show that was somewhat lacking in him. I mean, you've got Bobby Roode issuing this open challenge for whatever the hell is his King of the Mountain title that he has now. It tells you how little I paid attention to the product in recent months. And again, some of this comes from a fresher perspective because I haven't kept in tune that much with what this company is doing in recent months. So I feel uh, kind of reinvigorated in the sense that I can view this from a different perspective. I don't have that same jaded perspective that I would have had if I'd been watching it week in and week out because some of this stuff is new to me. Uh, but Bobby Roode's issuing this open challenge and then... I'm thinking to myself with some of the reports, so this is James Storm is going to answer, and we're going to get Bobby Roode versus James Storm, and that would be pretty fucking cool. Um, and instead, it's Bram. And like of all the people you're going to give this spot to, you're going to give it to Bram. I thought he had some major legal issues in terms of beating women. Do those go away? Is that the type of person that you're wanting to feature on your programming? I, I don't know. I, I guess. I mean, there's an intensity there with a Bram, but... I just don't know if he was needed here. I don't know if this was right. It was cool, however, to see after you got some running interference that James Storm comes through, and here's James Storm back in TNA, and all of a sudden we're bringing back together beer money. It's cool. I mean, it was a cool moment, especially if you watch TNA over the years. Beer money is one of the best tag teams they've ever had, one of the more entertaining tag teams for sure that they've ever had. Uh, and it was good to see these guys kind of reunite. I've always dug beer money shtick. Sorry, Joe, the show. That's the truth. Um, but not a lot of other memorable show moments in this show. And when you're trying to stand out and you're trying to, you know, relaunch in a new way, on a new path, in a new direction, I thought they needed more than they gave us. I thought we needed a little bit more of an effort to be a little more outside of the box and try new things. And as I was watching this show, you know, like Kurt Angle's promo and, you know, they're sitting there and they're, they're teasing him and Drew Galloway, um, which is fine. You're building up to a future match. And then all the stuff they did with uh, talking about Kurt Angle's farewell tour, that's cool because you're giving the narrative to him throughout 2016. Here's Jesse Goddard, here's Eli Drake, you're trying to incorporate more multiple people, the backstage segment, the Wolves, you know, again, talking about the presentation of how they do some of these things I like, you know, it's just, is that really a memorable moment? You know, Awesome Kong returning, that was kind of cool, but did that really feel like a big moment, especially if she's aligning herself with the Dallas? I just, you know, even Ethan Carter III winning the world title, you know, did that really resonate as a memorable moment? Is that something that's really going to hook people? Is that something that is really going to bring in the people that maybe watched TNA for the first time in a long time, like me, or maybe the first time ever? Will that be enough to bring them back the next week? And I don't know that it is. And in general, it speaks to some of the concerns I have about TNA, the concerns I have about this Impact Wrestling show, and its new home on Pop TV. As I'm sitting there and watching this, you know, they do this whole thing, and it's ultimately to get back to Matt Hardy versus Ethan Carter III for the TNA World title. And to me, it's just basically a slap in the face to a lot of people because it basically is an admittance that you wasted your time at Bound for Glory, and you wasted the past two and a half months just to put the belt back on Ethan Carter III any fucking ways. You didn't do anything new. You didn't do any different. You just went right back to the same crap. So why do what you did to begin with? That just... You know, is it that kind of wasting of time? I mean, it was good to see that this company was building up a lot to their one night only pay per view coming up this week, but that's not really a big show. It's not a show of significant consequence. I wish they would be building to a bigger show of significant consequence here. You know, but in general, my concerns are as follows is that when I tune in to watch Impact Wrestling, I'm trying to see if TNA has an identity. I want to see what their identity is, what path they're heading down what direction they're going down. Instead, I see weird heel Eric Young. Um, I see Fat Lardy in the main event picture. You know, it's just Kurt Angle almost being packaged as somewhat sad and on his last rope. It just, it didn't have a really good feel to me. I didn't know what they were trying to accomplish. I don't know what identity they were trying to create, cultivate, or establish here. If I could be so honest, it just... As I watched it, I'm like, the matches weren't outstanding. The promo segments weren't outstanding. The, the, the big moments, you know, weren't all that big. 
weren't a lot of things that really hooked you into this show. It didn't really hook you into wanting to watch it going forward. It was like you had time to prepare this, and this was the best that you got. Knowing that this was your first time on this network, and you would think you'd want to throw everything you possibly could into it, and put all of your efforts into creating the best possible show, if anything, trying to do too much, squeeze too much into two hours, and it just felt like TNA wasn't trying to do that. They were just trying to give you whatever the hell kind of show this was. It didn't feel like a TNA show from the past. It doesn't feel like a Ring of Honor show or a Lucha Underground show. It doesn't even feel like a WWE show. I don't know what the hell it is. And that's a problem. I don't know when I look at this show, especially if I haven't watched it in a while like I haven't or if I've never watched it at all, who is this company? What is this company about? Why should I take two hours out of my week, every week, to watch them. What are they bringing me that nobody else is? What are they going to do that is going to entertain me that another wrestling company isn't or another form of entertainment isn't? And I just didn't get that. It doesn't mean that they had to hit a home run with the show. But it felt like instead of even hitting a double into the gap or even maybe a, a, a bloop single, that it was a sacrifice bunt. It was like they were like... Mm. Let's just advance the runner and hope somebody else brings him in and hope something happens where this guy scores. You know, and, and it's okay at times, but you know, when you're trying to start things off here, this is not the way to go. And my biggest, biggest concern of all is that when it comes to TNA and when it comes to their Impact Wrestling show, there are things that I saw during the night and heard during the night that make me really, really concerned. You know, when I sit there and I look and you know, multiple times they're promoting other things that are coming up on Pop TV. It harkens back to when ECW was on TNN, if you remember, years back, and they were promoting whatever the fuck shows. What was it Rollerball? Or I can't fucking remember what it was, but you know exactly what I'm talking about, especially for you older fans. I remember watching ECW being on TNN and thought it would be something good that they had gotten on national cable television. And all that was happening was TNN was bringing in ECW for very little money and using them as an advertising and promotional piece for other things. And that's fine when you do that to a degree, but when it feels like the TNA product's priority for the network is not just to draw a big number, but it's to get people to watch into other things. Now, granted, I, I laughed when I, when I found out that one of their most popular shows is called Shit's Creek. <laughs> Excuse me. I me laughing my ass off. Three times I get to see Eugene Levy, I'm fine with that. But my hope is, is that TNA just isn't right back in another scenario where they're ultimately going to be up Shit's Creek. Because when I watch this, and I look, and the crowd has signs... Not for TNA, not for any of the wrestlers, but it will say like pop, you know, for pop TV. And it'll say it's other crap. I'm like, whose idea was that? Who are we here to get over? Are we here to get the TNA brand over? Are we here to get the Impact Wrestling show over? Are we here to get the wrestlers, the men, the knockouts over? Or are we just here to get other shows on the network over? And that's my biggest concern for all of this. There are things that I like about the product of TNA. You know, I like some of the things that they do from a presentation standpoint. I like the commentary team of Josh Matthews and the Pope. I don't know that they're good, but I know that they have energy. And after so many years of watching Mike Tanay and Taz and listening to Mike Tanay and Taz bore the fucking brakes off of us, it's nice to hear people that sound like they want to fucking be there, that sound like they're excited about something, that make big things actually feel like a big thing. You know, but and again, when you first come on, instead of showing all the cool things that Impact Wrestling could do or being heading right in and doing this and doing that, the very first person you see is fucking Dixie Carter. It's just no. Don't be like WWE. Don't be like TNA of the past. Be a new path. Be a new direction. And my concern is, is that this is just nothing more than TNA trying to hold their head above water and, and pray for the best going forward and hope they can figure out something else long term. And in the meantime, Pop TV is just using them as a platform and a device to promote other crap on their network. I mean, before the main event match, for five, God's sakes, they took a five minute break to promote Shit's Creek. Are they going to take a five minute break during Shit's Creek to promote Impact Wrestling on Tuesday nights? I don't think so. So, am I going to watch this going forward? I don't know. Was it a bad show? I wouldn't say that. I just don't think it was particularly good, 
And I don't think it gives me a lot of hope that things are going to get a lot better with TNA in 2016. 